Hello, guys. Hello, welcome back. And welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. And we are in, we're going to be flying the uh, Supermarine Spitfire by flying, flying Iron Board. The mod makers, fly, flying ironing board. <laughs> Sick cup of tea at the ready. How's everyone doing in chat? Twing TV? Sim racing Wales. <laughs> What's that? Boeing Cessna. Boeing takeoff. Boeing landing. Fire. 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 Help. <laughs> ambulance. 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 For, hang on. Wouldn't you want the fire engine before the ambulance? Otherwise, the ambulance is going to catch on fire. You've not thought about this. Hey, Spitfire. <laughs> hmm. Let's zoom this in because we've got small muscle. I'll zoom it in a bit. I made me a bit smaller so that we can have the map on the screen. Yeah, well, we've, we'll see what it's like with the old weathies. Hopefully everything's all good here. I've got my joystick set up. Got my throttle. We're using the um, Brunner CSL force feedback joystick, which makes things even more enjoyable. We just have to decide where we're taking off from. I was thinking of maybe doing a bit of a, an alpine adventure, but the weather's absolutely terrible. <laughs> so we might have to change. I'm going to put it on uh, live, um, but then custom. And we'll see what the weather's like in the Alps. So we'll give it, we'll go, we'll give a bit, a uh, bit of a flight through. Um... Oh, last time we were flying, we missed Nice. <laughs> nice is much further on the right. We end up flying down here and then th over the left and round here, and we end up uh, in El Prat. Nice is much further. It was much closer to Italy than I thought. So. I tell you what, let's take off from uh, Cote, Cote d'Azur, Nice Airport, and then uh, fly up the Alps in the Spitfire. Then we'll land at. Um, we can land at uh, Churchill <laughs> on the hillside. Oh, we, we could just find it. We'll set that as a an arrival, 107 nautical miles. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go. Flight, uh, yeah, I'm going to change the weather because the weather is mental at the moment in real life. So, let's do that. <laughs> Otherwise, we will die. We could try some real landings over the bad weather. Why not? Right, so we take off there. We're good. Ambulances will gather the corpses that have been thrown from the aircraft. <laughs> ah, fair enough. Okay, let's go for it. So this uh, this aircraft has been updated fairly recently. I think it was updated like two weeks ago, a week ago. No, unfortunately not. You need to get DCS to do that, to shooty shooty. This is more about sightseeing-y, sightseeing-y. Check that out. The map's working. Is that zoomed in enough for you guys to be able to see where we are? Or do you want me to zoom? I can probably zoom it in a bit more. Let's see. Ah. Oh, it's got the text on it. Oh, yeah. Is that all right? Can you guys see where we are? Check that out. I have to click ready to fly, otherwise it'll fall over. <laughs> there we go. Is that better if I zoom in a bit? Would you rather I be zoomed in or zoomed out? <laughs> how, how far should we zoom in on this? Maybe that's better. Then you can work out where we are. Is 
I better like that. Zoomed out. They because you can see where we are in the game. And then you can be a bit more zoomed in than that, but There you go. Or or zoomed right in so you can see what the name of the places are. I love it like that. I've decided. <laughs> Decision's been made. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's a very big plane. Yeah, the plane... <laughs> it's a 14... 400-mile-long <laughs> plane. It's a really good aircraft. You get in it and you walk through it and you end up in the other country. It's a new way of flying. Unfortunately, you need you need to go through passport control in the aircraft multiple times. Righty. Nice airport. Been here in real life. Nice airport. Actually, it is a very nice airport. This flaps up for the takeoff. We're in the shiny. Shiny Spitfire. Hello, uh, Full House. How's it going, man? This is a uh, flying iron heritage flight. This is their, their skin they've added. Look at that. I'd have a, I'd have a shiny Spitfire. Tin. Was it made out of tin? <laughs> was it wasn't made out of aluminum, was it? Or was it made out of aluminum? It's a very nice aircraft, isn't it? Being a Swede. Nice one, Frederick. Control surface is all working. Yeah, we still got this bug here where it's the flight input isn't right. Is it just the animation? Yeah, look, the flight surfaces are linear. I think the I think the animation's broken. Because look at that. I'm I'm putting a linear input. You can see the uh, aerolons moving. Lin that's linear. But the joystick, <laughs> the animation is not hooked up properly. What is that about? Come on, Microsoft. I think that was a that since the last update. Oh well, uh, that's that. Parking brake is that. Parking brake off. So we'll, we'll uh, yeah we'll do that. Rudder control is good. And we're off to uh, to the Alps, guys. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Uh, welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen, to this Spitfire flight from Nice, Côte d'Azur, to somewhere in the Alps, where we happen to run out of petrol. I'd like to welcome you all aboard the Cayman Muscle Airways flights and of course as always we will be delivering complimentary tea and coffee once we are at cruising altitude. If you take a look out of the window to your left you will see Nice and of course the weather which is cloudy but with sunshine through the gaps in the clouds. That is indeed how the weather works. You will also notice that we have not painted this aircraft, and that is for cost-saving measures. The less paint, the lighter, the faster we go, and the cheaper the flight is due to less fuel being consumed. And finally, before we take off, I'd like to remind you all to sign your life insurance policies and disclaimer waivers for any loss of life that is likely to occur during this flight. Those of you that need to use the bathroom, please remember, do so only once the seatbelt light has been illuminated. And remember that to use the bathroom, you will need to open the canopy and walk out onto the wing. Uh, holding onto the wing, allow your bowel movement to take place, and then <laughs> you uh, will have successfully used the bathroom in the Spitfire. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we are about to depart now.
Right, there we go. Important part of that. I, yeah, I read about that, or I watched a video on that. Did I put my brake back on or not? I can't remember. It's the brake on. So we'll, we'll power up with a bit of brake. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Huge error. Huge error here. Have any force feedback at the moment? Ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> right. See if that works. Ah, we got like rumble and everything, and also we haven't got the engine on, so the joysticks you notice is falling forwards because there's no. Well, check this out. This is what you pay a grand for a force with my joystick. We power up a bit. Oh, it's coming alive by itself. Look at that. Now it's a lot. Now it's. That's what you pay for. <laughs> Don't get out much. Right, here we go. Get ready. Oh, there's a spit flying past us there. Brakes off. Oh, she's more stable now. Oh! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Did I just say it's more stable? Oh, Jesus, okay. Maybe not. Take that back. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. It's all over the shop. <laughs> okay. Right, hang on. We're doing that takeoff again. <laughs> my force feedback's messed up. Hang on a minute. Bloody hell. Let's land that. We're going to land, and I'm going to adjust my force feedback. We're going to take off more gradually. That had some tug on it, didn't it, once it got rolling? No, I, I, my, my force feedback settings aren't right. That's me. Microsoft Flight Sim doesn't have any force feedback. You, you have to you use the... Um, my joystick has force feedback. It has its own force feedback using telemetry. Right, let's land here. <laughs> we'll land back down. Bit of an error there. Just don't don't mind me, guys. A little bit of an error. I need to turn the torque down on my joystick. It was well strong. Five newton meters of tug. Jesus, a bit of heavy landing. <laughs> that would have smashed the wheels off in real life. Jesus, why is it so leery on the ground? My God, we're floating all over the place. Well, there's a passenger jet. Right. Or maybe it's just... No, the wind sucks down. My God, it's... Well... Yeah, it's a little bit out of control on the ground, this. <laughs> Whoa! Nose up! Right, okay. Let's just adjust the force feedback settings here. Slight, slight uh, technical issue there. <laughs> Endo. 
Got to grab more puke bags. Yes, you go and do that, guys. <laughs> I'll try and work out what I've done here. Oh, hang on. Effects. Turn some of these down a bit. Oh, here we go. That, sh that should be... what? How many knots is this? Uh, it's 350 knots, isn't it? So let's put this on, like... 390... Let's say 400 in case I do some crazy flying. <laughs> uh. So basically, what I'm doing here is so what, what you can see here for those of you who haven't seen this before that, um, so you see the dot, that's how much, um, you can see the force curve and the dot is like me moving my controller there. Um, you see how many newton meters it's putting out. So because we're on the ground, this is just there's, there's just gravity pushing on it. So it goes. We're getting like what uh, half a newton meter. But as we speed up, that curve will increase. So. Uh, get more strength but then this this can also the shape of it also changes a bit as well let's see how this goes that should have done it we should be good now there we go that's a good curve right let's try that again but remember it tugs to the right a bit <laughs> Break off. Well, let it roll a bit. There it is. It just kicks in there. Well, and then it... Then the wing wants to come up. And now we're airborne straight away. <laughs> Bloody hell. I need a motion rig for that. <laughs> it's so, um... Abrupt. It like wants to go to the left, but it also wants to roll over. That's. I took off with my landing gear down. That's why we took off so soon. New. Right, we're off anyway. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, the flaps were down. That's why that didn't help. You really don't want to take with the flaps down. <laughs> There we go, there's Nice. I think they've changed the sound in this and made it more 3D. Yeah, the, the torque's trying to roll them. It wants to be a, it wants to be a ball. That's much better force feedback settings now. It's, it's so the really nice thing with the force feedback joystick. Yeah, we are online. Oh, landing gear. The really nice thing with the force feedback joystick is that um, as you go fast or slow, you can feel the amount of resistance of the wind on the aerolons. And it also, you can feel when it starts stalling, you get uh, noise like turbulence from the aerolons as well. But it, like, it means as you go faster, it's more pressure to move the joystick. So it, it actually makes it easier to be precise when you're going fast. It makes it harder to overfly, like, overfly at speed, which is nice. 
So you notice that is, that's in a, exactly like in a real aircraft. The faster you go, the stronger the yoke, the heavier the yoke gets. That it's quite stiff on the ground due to all the uh, cables and everything. But we've got 144 people on the plane. If you all click the like button, I will give out free sick bags. <laughs> so by all means, click the like button. River down there. It is vibrating a little bit, just engine vibrations, but I've, you just set that yourself. Let's follow this river. We're going to fly the river up into the hills. You got your garbage back. Well, as long as it's not got holes in it. Oh, we're getting to see. We could really tell that we're speeding up here. Woo! Oh, absolute beauty. Really nice uh, around here. It's uh, 10 p.m. here. I've actually been. Um, I've been up this road in a car. <laughs> I've actually been on this road. Awesome. It's a really nice road to uh, drive along. I mean, in, in real life, being on this road. Not in a sim, obviously, because there ain't in no sims. Plane is vibing. Crazy hills around here. Oh dear, quite a bit of turbulence. <laughs> Time to trim some trees. Oh, look at that. Nice little verge. Nice little bank. Flight, our flight path is up this way. <laughs> We're gonna die. Very nice, isn't it? It's very pleasant. Off to the Alps we go. Is anyone joining us in their Spitfire? We've got a passenger jet behind us. Who's that? Where can you wait? Where did you uh, take off from? Oh, there's a. Who's in the passenger jet? There's always someone in a passenger jet. Is what free? This mod? No, this is a like a twenty pound mod, but it's a really nice. It's a really nice plane. Um, it's probably one of the nicest propeller planes. You just uh, go online and it automatically, if you, it can have up to fifty people within this set, within like a mile of you or something. Yeah, I, I bought this plane with my own money, so I'm, I'm, this is not even a shill. I actually, I did pay for this. 
It's not live weather. I, I changed it. It's a thunderstorm in real life. With no visibility, so I turned the live weather off. The biggest, most obnoxious. Probably the... Is it a 737? Yeah, this, this is the nicest Ooh. propeller plane in the game. It's got interesting flight dynamics. Like, it's got... At high speed, it, it flies to, like, like a like a laser. But at low speed, it gets quite leery, so it's still quite fun to, to land. Thank you for subscribing, Muller. How's it going, man? fast do we go? How much fuel have I got? Because we haven't got an airport for a while, so... Um, oh. Oh, no, you've got to push the button. <laughs> Handy. 20. Is it in kilograms? Not flying to the ground here. I'm not sure if it's in litres or kilograms. I've got 20 fuels, yeah. <laughs> I think both tanks are linked together in this. It won't be gal... gal oh, maybe it, maybe, it, maybe it might be right, actually. I have 20 fuels. <laughs> How many fuels have you got? 20. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. We've landed near the Kardashian border to, to acquire some fuels for the warp core. Hello, Lucas83. How's it going? Oh, stretch the legs here. Bloody hell. Oh. <laughs> this is how all Spitfire pilots would fly. And I think I spent too much time sat down. I've got, probably got deep vein thrombosis. This is, is it the Mark II? Welcome to Simrig Yoga with Game of Muscle. I can't even put my leg out straight whilst I'm sat down. And I've got the flexibility of a concrete slab. <laughs> Dilithium crystals. <laughs> We're flying to uh, an airport in the Alps. I'm not sure which one. Oh. I'm just having a bit of a stretch here. My legs are killing me. <laughs> there we go. Deep vein thrombosis avoided. Why is there no snow? Can we not like, get some snow on here? Let's have a look. That's better. <laughs> That's more Alpi, isn't it? That's more like the Alps. That's the Alps I remember. There we go. I've never flown over the Alps in the summer. I, I, in fact, I've only ever been to the Alps. It doesn't popo cart, unfortunately. I've only ever been to the Alps when there's been at least some snow on top. Even at the... Is September's probably the closest to summer. I've gone over the Alps when I went to Croatia a few years back. Even then, there was, uh, that was there was people skiing. Oh, 
Well, that's nice, isn't it? We've got a plane catching us from behind. Oh, hang on. Is that Mont Blanc over there? That might be Mont Blanc. Or maybe it's the Matterhorn. <laughs> it's sticking up a lot compared to all the other mountains. Ven 2, is that the one that's on the Toblerone box? <laughs> We're flying over to the Pointy Mountain thing. Check the fuel again here. Well, he's going down. We're on like, we're on 10, we're on like 10 and 3 quarters fuel. Is there chocolate on top of this mountain? I only told you to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> You've only gone and how? <laughs> Imagine hearing your guide say, we're, we're going to the pointy mountain thing. Full house. I'll have you know that these are the best flight tours you can have. It says gallons in big bold where? Oh yeah, gallons fuel. <laughs> All right. I'm not I'm not sure like homes, all right? <laughs> Bloody hell. Fair enough. I guess it's gallons then. Sorry. Sorry for not reading the really obvious bold text. It's not my fault that the user interface in this Spitfire is outdated. It's as if it was built in the 1940s in a rush during a war. Ridiculous. This is the Toblerone. This is the Toblerone hill. Guys, it's the to Toblerone mountain. Does anyone want a Toblerone? I do. I'm pretty sure that's the Toblerone Mountain. Oh, I want chocolate now. Is it the Toblerone Mountain? Can someone confirm? Oh, look at that. back on our flight course here. It's too late for chocolate. It's never too late for Toblerone. Yeah, I've got a... Um, I've got a... Uh, I just used the hat switch. I've, I've got a hat for look left, look right, look down, look up. And then I've got a hat switch for zoom in and zoom out. And then I've got a button that resets the camera view. It'd be nice if it reset in a different place. And then I've got a button for forwards, backwards, up and down. And it works inside and outside. And that's that's um, Switzerland down there. Was it Italy? No, that's Italy. We're flying over Switzerland, I guess. Swish. <laughs> hey, Gaiden. 
Uh, yeah, we're just flying around for a bit. I don't, I don't know how long we'll fly for. We're just chilling out. we we'll do some landing. Toblerone's the Matter... Where's the Matterhorn located? That's like Italy over there. Look at that. It's nice with little bits of snow. I like the um Oh, we scratched the glass. <laughs> oh no, we scratched my cockpit. Yeah, look I like how you got the uh, two layers of clouds. Then the, uh, the the light scattering is really nice, isn't it? It's a painting. Oh, I'm off my flight path here. Go back to the Alpes. Alps on the left, flat on the right. What, what add-on is that? I took off from Nice Airport and then we're heading towards um, what was it called? The, the, the little runway that's on the hillside in the Alps by the ski slopes. It's one of the landing challenge airports. Forgot his name. Last trip was to Levi. Where's that? Yeah, I'm, I, last time I went on a plane was... Was it to Frankfurt? I think it was when I went to Frankfurt in Germany. Oh, no, no. It was when I went to, it was when I went to Monaco. It was when I went here. <laughs> January 2020. That was the last time I was on a plane. January 2020, so over a year. But I, I don't normally fly that much, to be honest. I never really travelled. Um, as a kid, I travelled a little bit, but then not in my 20s. <laughs> Raskas Cafe, <laughs> which I vandalised. Not on purpose. <laughs> oh, no! The engine's just turned off. I oh, know, the RPM's coming back up now. What? We lost RPM there. Is it overheating, maybe? Uh, little problem here. Oh, shit. Why has all the fuel disappeared so quickly? We should have had enough range. Okay, guys, we've got a bit of an issue here. We've run out of petrol. <laughs> this always happens. Right, now we need to find a field to land in. Looks like we're flying a nice glider. There's a river down there. We can land on that. When the fuel just disappeared all of a sudden? It, like, we had plenty and then it just disappeared. Oh, I got this. Guys. I was following the board, the country border and not the flight <laughs> I was following the country border and not the flight path. Small mistake. They're both purple. They're both a pink line. Okay, I don't have enough fuel to make the airport. We're going to have to land about 30 miles short here. Oh, we're so close as well. It's literally, see where that river is. See where that river is? It's about half that distance again to the left. I think because I had this on full power as well.
Well, we've still got RPMs, but we've got no fuel. I don't know how much reserve fuel you get. We've still got a little bit, but... Oh, I don't think we'll make it. Oh, man, we're... Yeah, we've lost, we've lost engine power. I can't, you can't gain altitude with no engine. Right, we need to find a field to land in. Matt Horn's to my far right. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I knew, I told, I knew we'd be landing at some point. Hello, who's that? Can we do a mid-air fuel exchange? If he flies right next to me and just hands me... He can just pour some fuel in. Is there, is there a... That's a ski slope there. The river. We just need to find something flat to land on. Oh, there's a field there. It's not big enough, though. Man, we are <laughs> we're like two hills away from the runway. Yeah, we, we have no no uh, no power. Surprised the engine's not cut off completely. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of nice twisty roads to land on. That's exactly what we want. Right, let's look for something down here. At least there's a tan. They'll have petrol. Fields all have bloody trees in them. Oh, I'll tell you, a good pro tip is to make sure you've got enough fuel for your flight and then a bit extra. No, we're not. There's mountains in the way of the airfield that we want to be going for. Is this this doesn't actually stop that quickly. That's cheating. This is this is a simulator, no none of that cheating. I mean, that road is fairly straight. That's a train track. <laughs> that would explain why it's so straight. Uh, why don't they have fields in this country? Yeah, there's not... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. That'll do. Look at that. That's oh, a road. And there's water... Oh, we can land on that road with snow on it. We might hit a few cars, but that's their fault for being on the road. That'll do. That's going to be wide. Right, we got it. Lap down. Why is there an ominous cloud there? A, a plane. A passenger jet. I'm going to use that road. Where's our speed at? gear is not working because we're out of electricity oh shit because the landing gear needs the engine right we're landing on the snow without landing gear that's fine it's all fine at least the snow will help us slide along into the traffic
around the corner. Let's try not to land into oncoming traffic. Whoa! <laughs> Coming in! Don't mind me! There we oh, car! <laughs> Perfect landing! Oh, we've been driven into by hover planes and hover cars. <laughs> It was all right. We would have walked away from that. Perfect landing. Right. Let's uh, refuel. Whereabouts were we? Okay, I see. Well, no, we, we didn't die. And the snow cushion the landing, so it was fine. We were here. I'm going to change for the uh, classic livery here. I don't know if you could do manual gear extension in this. I mean, you'd think there would be a lever for it. Best glide airspeed in the Spitfire is whatever, whatever, whatever <laughs> the plane floats at. I don't think it's even marked on the dash. It might be. That's like a modern thing. <laughs> That's like a more, the uh, speed gauges with the uh, glide, sp like minimum speed before stall is like a, I don't think they had that in the 1940s. I think that was around about the 1960s they started putting them on. After people kept like turning and then stalling into the ground, they were like, hang on a minute, if we put a marking on the dash. Oh no. Uh, I didn't set the weather. Oh dear. Hang on, let's see. The uh, yeah, see, it's not got a marking for minimum airspeed. I think they. I literally. I'm pretty sure they only started doing that in the 1960s. Well, we'll land here like we intended to, and then uh, and then we'll do some uh, landings elsewhere. This runway is mental. Crazy wrong way. Nothing like landing up the hill. Right, let's go for that. How's it going, man? Welcome to uh, Spitfire. The cockpit line's nice, isn't it? I need to get a scarf. That's coming. The scarf is on the way.
Oh, that'll do. That was sexy. Bit of a stall on that. You, you have to look out the window on a Spitfire to land it. <laughs> Who needs to see out the front? You're pointing so... Because it's... Um, We reverse it, come on. We've got to take off as well. Yeah, because um, because you have to land on the like upwards, otherwise you end up smashing it. Yeah, you still want to land on the front wheels, but you don't want to. I don't know Apex! We're gonna turn around at the top of the hill and then we're gonna do a takeoff and then we'll find somewhere else to land. Might be on a different server. Oh look, someone's got one of the, uh, the little science planes is parked there. Ah! I don't know. Right, here we go. Bloody hell! Ah! Fence! <laughs> what? As, as soon as you get on the power with this plane, not even the tail is enough to turn it. <laughs> as soon as you get on the power, it goes off even more than it used to. Try that again. What on earth? I know it's got engine torque, but normally, once you've got up to the, once you've got the RPMs up, it doesn't want to go as crazy. Uh, I think it's yeah, it was updated. I think it's even harder to fly. <laughs> oh no, we're back in the thunderstorm. We're in the snow. <laughs> wow, why not take off in the snow? I mean, you can't even see where you're bloody going now. Let's get rid of some of this snow. Right. Yeah, it's like... It's power over... It drives like a Nissan Primera. Uh, the, the real Spitfire had a, lot of, had a lot of tug in it. And it was quite leery on takeoff. What on earth? You can't even counteract it with the rudder. Right, let's try let's try landing it again. <laughs> we went through the fence there. It's all right. Oh, now, now the fence is solid. What on earth?
Right, let's... Flaps back up. Maybe it's because this is such a slope, it's... It's like it's ignoring the rudder input. So we have the tail there. We straighten the tail up. Well, oh. <laughs> I'm going to get lined up. Get lined up with this slope. Oh, no. Yeah, well, once you're rolling the shopping trolley wheel, you know, it's all right because it's been pushed to the back. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think... Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a slope's too steep to stop. Right. <laughs> right, okay, we're going to do this. It's going to... Do you, reckon, do you think we can roll down the hill without any engine and still take off? <laughs> shall we? Shall we find out? If we have the flaps down, no, if we have the flaps up and we roll, let's see if we can get, let's see if we can do it. We're going to have the flaps up and we'll roll and see if we can get airborne and then get on the power once we've left the runway. We'll have to put the flaps down just before we get to the end. Here we go. We're going to roll. We're rolling. At least it won't turn to the right because the engine won't roll it. Here we go. Okay, I can feel a bit of load up on the wings. Right, hello. <laughs> we... He's as good a landing as me. Right, here we go. Flaps down. Pull back. Power up. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Didn't work. Didn't quite work. Yeah. To answer that question, no, you can't roll down the hill and take off. <laughs> Oh, they got a replay of the bloody driving. <laughs> That's not the right replay. Right, we're trying that again. That was a textbook recycle. Right, it was <laughs> very expensive tree trimming. Uh, the goggles are to stop trees getting in my eyes. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> Todd Benazes. 20 mile per hour. Well, maybe, maybe if we roll down the hill. Right, I think we could try that again. Bloody hell. Maybe if we roll down the hill, but then nose down. So we don't stall. Like if we roll down, roll down the hill, nose down, and then power up straight away. And if we just get enough, it might be enough to, like, flop it. Let's try and do it. We can do this, guys. <laughs> I'm going to do it with the flaps down. Although that will stop us gaining speed a little bit. I think, uh, I think we can do it. We'll have to roll into the slope. For sure. Right, here we go. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Oh, he's not going any faster. There's not enough hill. I've got my, my joystick pushed right forwards. Whoa. Oh, no, no. We've got a bit more pace. 
Go, 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 gap in the trees. I think if we bounce it off the grass, we might be able to do it. Yeah, I think if we bounce it off the hill just right and keep the nose down. We got this. Bit of headwind. Yeah, glider would be fine. Oh, yeah, if we put the landing gear immediately. Oh, it's so slow, though. What, uh, what direct the runway was pointing south, wasn't it? Let's try that. How do we uh, choose wind direction? Add wind layer. Oh, here we go. So that we want the wind to be going... Is that my direction? No. The runway is uh, almost... I think it's south, so... We want the wind to be going north. A little bit north, easily. There we go. I don't want you to go. <laughs> there we go. We can take off on the spot. We put this like this. Got this. <laughs> Playing God. Here we go, guys. And what were we going to do? Flaps down. Yeah, flaps down. And then nose down all the way down there. Run up. We really want to get the gear up. Oh, he's definitely wobbling more. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, we've got lift! We've got lift! Ah! Oh, oh, no! We, we got lift, but it's, it's not enough. <laughs> We got lift. We got you've got as soon as you get lift, you've got no control of the aircraft. It, it. Yeah, the problem is, it's like it, it doesn't uh, the, the rear tail loses. You, you get no control until you've actually got actual lift. Right, we need to increase the wind a bit. Not and not use the um, not use the uh, the flaps because it's just that's slowing us down too much. Okay, we got we got this, guys. It's happening. <laughs> We're doing this if it kills me. A bit more wind. flaps I don't have any toe brakes <laughs> I can't use toe brakes if I don't bloody have any I'm using driving simulator pedals here I mean, the one thing you can do is you combine the left and right yaw to the tow brake as well, and then have it only come in very faintly. But I don't have that, all right? Right, are you ready, guys? It's happening. We're doing it this time. Increased tire pressure. Cold tires. Here we go, guys. Pray to the sky, gods. We're rolling. She's rolling. Keep the nose down. 
come on. Come on. Now why? Um, it, there's an issue with this. You, it's even with no, um, even with no wind, the plane is trying to lift and turn to the left. With the engine off. I think there's a bug. <laughs> Let's try it with a different plane. I think there's a bug with that with that plane. Yeah, but I'm put I'm literally pointing the plane down at the ground and then and then it when it gets lift, it's still lifting up and to the left. Even though the engine is on like idle. The, the torque from the rudder should happen if you're on the power and it should happen as you get like when the power is first put on as well Let's try a different plane and see if it does the same thing I mean you, you might think oh the tail the wheel the, the tail wheel is Moving it, but then that's in a line because we're going down the runway straight it was starting to lift though and that but it lifts it even though i'm pushing down it lifts with it on the back it should i, I think it should lift in a different way i don't know <laughs> maybe we need to take some fuel out <laughs> i don't know it's almost as if the plane doesn't like trying to roll down a hill well this will do it this thing's a glide this thing glides like a beast Right, we'll try that. We're going to do an energy efficient takeoff. We don't need to put on the sticks. We're not trying to, we're not trying to take off in that scenario. We're trying to get we're trying to get to the end as much momentum as possible before we get to the cliff face and when we get to the cliff face, then we've got enough speed so that we can get on the power and fly off before hitting the ground. You you do realise we're not we're not using I don't know if you've just joined the stream we're we're trying to take off without using any power <laughs> just maybe you missed that part <laughs> maybe <laughs> hot air balloon I mean a jet plane would be fine like a, a rocket oh you just joined <laughs> he's a little bit confused that makes sense. Right, let's add this wind in. This will take off easy. This will do it. Okay. <laughs> We're doing it if this kills me. Here we go. This aircraft is... Uh, this is well good. It's proper fast, but it's also really efficient. It's not as glidey as that scientific aircraft, the British one, but... Right, here we go. Oh, flaps. Oh, flaps up. Now, flaps down is probably better if we're trying to do this. <laughs> Fuel saving takeoff. Take 10. Got two people in this one, though. Oh, look, yeah. Yeah, I can feel the joysticks coming alive. Oh, we're good, guys. It's Whoa! No! <laughs> it's drifting. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Whoa! Go, 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 go! Oh! Oh, no! <laughs> off road! Off road! Off road! Ah! Oh. Well, it's close. Right. That was close. It got it's when it just gets off the ground the uh it's the <laughs> control of the aeroplane in the top uh, maybe there's something happening with it going from tires to aero like dynamic physics real planes are squirrely when you go from ground to air but they're not that i mean i guess you'd have a bit, bit more power they're not that squirrely though
Need more wind. It was close though. We had enough. We started to get air pressure on the uh, wings. I could feel it. <laughs> the people joining the stream think that this I'm um, think that this is me trying to do a normal takeoff. This is how you play the game, Tao. If you you don't know how to play flight simulators, clearly. This is literally peak Microsoft flight sim here. Yeah? Some people just don't understand flight sims, I have to say. They've got to learn they've got to learn the pro pro flying techniques. The first thing in a flight sim, most important thing, is uh, to set the wind speed <laughs> on the ground, then to have an aerodynamical plane, and then to roll down the hill and take off. I have been in a little plane, yes. Right, we got this, guys. The MC, what's that? The icon, yeah, the icon take can take off at like, uh, was it, is it like 50 knots, 30 knots? <laughs> Whoa, no, it's like coming in. Well, that's one way to park a plane. That's just your normal take off that. Right, here we go, guys. Flaps down. Try and do it from the cockpit. Whoa, no. I'm keeping the nose pointed down this time. And now I'm going to pull up at the last minute. Whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> the backflip. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it suddenly snags. Right, here we go. We can drive back up to the runway here. <laughs> it suddenly snags and then goes left like you can't actually control it with the rudders. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, now we're doing hill climb. Oh, we haven't got enough power. <laughs> The hill's too... St what on earth? What's happening here? Oh, unless I've got a tailwind, maybe I set the wind the wrong way. I might, that would explain what's happening. It might be that I put the, the wind in the wrong direction. That would totally... That would 100% explain what's happening. Yeah, you say that, but then I'm, if I'm pushing down on the stick, so the the aircraft is effectively on the ground still. Like it's pushing itself to the ground. It's like a car, and then I'm using the tail, so the wind is pushing it. <laughs> I can't get back to the runway. Right, let's just take off here, and then we'll land back on the runway. Oh shit, come on, this will do. Okay, this <laughs> is not very smooth. It's hard to take off on the grass here. Oh my god, this is a bumpy runway. <laughs> it's a little bit too bumpy. <laughs> Got some problems taking off on this hillside. The grass is nice though.
I'm stuck now. Oh. There we go, the wheel got stuck. Oh, hang on, no, this... Oh, you know, it does have... Yeah, you know, I was going to say it didn't have a rudder, but it does on the side. Oh, come on! God damn it. Oh, hang on, maybe that... Come on! <laughs> come on! Come on! <laughs> Stop! Bouncing the take off tree tree <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> It's not <laughs> Go 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 trees trees Oh it's gonna hit the trees through the gap well 360 no scope and we're stuck in the tree <sighs> <laughs> Right, forget that. We don't go back to the wrong way. I thought we could do that without having to reload. Bloody hell. Right. What is the most aer aerodynamic plane in this that will take off? Hang on, which way is the runway going? Oh, well, was, the wind was the wrong way. The wind was the wrong way. So we, oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Hang on, where's the top of the runway? And where's the bottom? Oh, yeah, the wind was blowing... We could do this in the Spitfire. I had the wind blowing the wrong way. We had a tailwind, and it was so it was pushing the. Um, it as we got airborne, the tailwind that was coming in and pushing the plane back, and that's why it was going all like, all over the place. If this works, which it should do now, it's all my fault for setting the. I set the weather wrong. <laughs> Every pilot knows that you don't set the weather wrong. Is 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 flying one oh one? Don't set the weather wrong. So the way that we're going north on this runway, so we need we need the wind to be going like uh, yeah, we, <laughs> wind damage. Right, we've got this. We've got this. Clear skies. Wind layer. So we're taking off that way. So we need the wind to be going this way. Right. It's happening, guys. It's happening. For good measure, I'm going to add another wind layer. We got it. We got it. You guys are ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm having a sip of tea for good measure. Schoolboy. Schoolboy wind error. Come on, baby. Spitfire all the way. Just those, those. Oh no, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> I have my throttle at 100% power. Right, brakes off. Right, come on. I, don't, I think we should have the flaps down. Actually, no, so we don't want it to take off too soon. Stumpy wings. That's not ideal. That was the that was the wrong plane to pick. Oh well. Oh, here we go. We can do this. That was so close. It was a lot more stable that time as well. It, it had the. If I had pushed down for that initial lift, we'd have been all right, I think. I need the plane, the, the Spitfire without the stumpy. I'd want to pick the stumpy wing one.
we got it. We got it, guys. And I think a little bit more wind as well. Foliage fail. This is the most fuel efficient way of taking off. Well, it's not actually, is it? But let's pretend it is. Oh, thanks for subscribing. Right, we got this, guys. Stumps are for chumps. a lawnmower to the front. Do I have the flaps up? I, st I still... F no, I think we need the flaps down. Yeah, I'm sure the passenger jet in front of us helps. Takeoff. Only took a 50 knot headwind. Oh my god, look, we can't actually land now. That was awesome. Now we've got to try and land with a 50 knot tailwind. Wind shear, wind shear. <laughs> oh dear. Look at the wind pushing us over. <laughs> It's going to be easier to land downhill with this amount of wind. Well, we've got to land now. on the spot oh man look at this this is ridiculous how it's done yeah you are supposed to land the other way but I put a, uh, like a 60 knot tailwind so it's not gonna happen right let's do a, let's do a proper flight somewhere now <laughs> where should we fly to it's all right that, that's kind of how you land Spitfires half the time Oh, should we go to Australia? Set it to uh, live weather and live time. Hang on. Here we go. It's uh, sunrise in Australia. Oh, should we check out Sydney? Oh, where, what about Ayers Rock? Where, where's Ayers Rock? 
What's Uru? Is that where Air's Rock is? Is that what Air's Rock's called? Uluru. What's what's Air's Rock? Where whereabouts is it, guys? Oh, it's this. Okay. Awesome. I hope you guys are all right. I hope you enjoyed that takeoff. <laughs> that only took 40 minutes. Textbook. Oh. But oh, where is it? <laughs> Stop. Wow, there's it's mountainous terrain here. <laughs> it must be that. Oh, there's a lot in Australia. Bloody hell, look at this, it's just a... Not in real life, no. That long, it's that over there. Okay, we're going towards it. Oh my God, look how flat it is. This is Mars, Australia, same thing. Let's get lower to the ground here. I think we've got any kangaroos we can fly into. I got the Eurofighter for free, so... You should be able to get it for free, or cheap. It's not very good, the Eurofighter, to be honest. Oh, thanks for subscribing and clicking the like button, guys. Oh, we're on 100 likes here. Appreciate it. Um, some website add it for free, like one of these flight sim stores. Folding things, thank you for subscribing, welcome. Do you know what's funny with Microsoft Flight Sim? Is like the whole streaming thing, it was like, oh, if you stream it, you know, you'll, you'll be able to stream all the content in Microsoft Flight Sim, it won't take up all the space. I mean, in fairness, my X-Plane 11 folder is like 800 gigabytes. But my Microsoft Flight Sim folder is like still three, three, 350, 400 gig. <laughs> it's not like it actually saved a lot of space. It's still bonkers Flight Sim. Imagine getting lost out here. There's nothing. There's nothing here. At least it's nice and safe for flying though. Nothing to fly into. You might as well just have it. Just get an aeroplane if you live in Australia. Tree! <laughs> I managed to hit the one tree that's two metres taller than the rest. We might have to do a flight across Australia, guys. Not now. It'll take like 12 hours, but... <laughs> emptier than a Tottenham's trophy cabinet. Well, there's that whole thing in the outback. People die. die they, they, they run out of fuel or the car breaks down. Oh, there. Hang on. There's Air's Rock over there. <laughs> the one... <laughs> I wonder where it is. Is it the one object that's sticking out? Look at that. Uh, yeah, people, people's cars break down, and it's probably it's better to. What you should always do. This is good advice in general for anything. If you're doing, if you're going out anywhere walking, even if you're local, is you tell people, "I'm going walking for the day. I will call you. I'll let you know when I'm back, and I'll, I expect to be back at 6 p.m." So the problem is, people still do that in Australia. Some people don't, and then they die. But some people still say to the, you know, the family and stuff, they're like, okay, we're going out, we're supposed to be this, this time. And then a day later, the family's like, oh, they've not come back. But then they leave the bloody car. And it's, it's a lot easier to track a car or see a car from the air than it is a single person that's got a heat stroke. And the other thing is, a car, 
not an electric car, but <laughs> old, like, you know, car cars with fuel have radiators and stuff. They've got quite a lot of water in them and also quite a lot of sun protection. Yeah, you can get those. You know, there's emergency ones, CB. The um, watch things you can get. They're quite good. They're not actually that expensive. They're like 120 quid. I was looking to get one for if I go kayaking in the sea. It's like this emergency beacon radio, and it just it just you pull it, and a helicopter will come. <laughs> and if you if you accidentally pull it and don't cancel it, you'll get very pissed off people. But if you pull it on purpose, they'll rescue. It doesn't cost anything because they don't want people to not to to be worried about calling for rescues. But yeah, you can get them pretty cheap. Well, it depends if you put antifreeze in it or not. <laughs> Drink the brake fluid. <laughs> You should pull it before leaving. Oh yeah, by the time I but by the time I get lost in the wilderness, the helicopter already arrived to give me fuel. Perfect. Is that my shadow or another plane? That's oh, my shadow. <laughs> I thought it was another plane flying very low to the ground. Yeah, this was a this is a an accident. Look at that. Crash into Ayers Rock. I didn't see it. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. Whoa, turbulence. Look at that. What a chunk. Is that Ayers Rock? Or is that another one? Whoa! <laughs> it's now Aeroplane Rock. I guess they always photograph it from this angle because it's got the, uh, the steep slope. Just put a McDonald's on top of it. Do you think we can land on that? It's a bit craggy. I think we can land on this. Doesn't exactly look smooth though, does it? Oh man, there's so much turbulence from because it's the only thing in the area. Mental, it looks like a walnut. It should be called Air, Air, Air's Walnut. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to land on that. It's way too bumpy. Walnut Rock. Scrotum rock. <laughs> it's a testicle in, in the outback. That's probably very offensive to people that see this as a religious site. Whee! Okay, that's probably not a good idea.
I think they're aiming to do the Xbox version for Christmas, uh, Carl TV. Oh, hang on. Where's this other guy? Oh, there he is. You can see his shadow. Let's have a let's have a race around the rock. Let's get flying formation around it. I'll try and catch up with it in. I'll keep flying around and then uh, you should be able to drop down and catch me. Well, the good thing is, to get this to run on the new Xbox, they're going to have to keep optimising it more, so it will definitely uh, it'll run better on PC. They, to be fair, they have actually optimised it quite a bit since launch. They, they're supposed to be that. Is it DirectX 12? Day. Apparently, should get like another twenty percent performance out of it. Oh, no, no, relic! Thanks for tuning in, man. There he is. Catch it! I'll power down, so you should be able to catch up with me. We could do like a. You could do Airs Rock racing. <laughs> you start if you start side by side on the ground. You'd need someone that could say go on like Discord or something. And then you have to take your take off at the same time and maybe you have to do a certain number of laps. It's all about flying as close as possible to it. Tighter to radius, faster laps. Oh I'll catch up with this. <laughs> Is that a runway there? Get like three three planes flying around. This would be cool. Aludu, yeah. There he is. He's overshot us. I don't think they. I don't think they are listening to the uh, stream. Oh, he's going to hit the ground there. No. How much is the ultimate game pass the, the only problem for me with the xbox is that I, if you've got a pc most of the best stuff on xbox is already on uh pc so like the best xbox games is like forza i guess i mean i think it's not a bad thing but m most of the actual really good console games are all on uh They're all on uh, PlayStation. Is this better than G? Wow! I don't know. It looks nicer than GT3. Right? I mean, a Spitfire is pretty amazing. Should we fly to another... Fly to another one. Let's have a look at these other rocks. That was quite nice. Look at the shadow. That's a screenshot, surely. That's quite good. The uh, it simulates uh, if you go upside down, the fuel cuts off. Or he loses RPM at least. Check that out. so much in Australia <laughs> I feel like getting in the Eurofighter and flying around the Australian coast that road's a bit busy
No, well, there is an SR71, but it, it, the uh, sim doesn't simulate Mac speeds properly. All right, let's look for a patch of desert to land on that doesn't have trees, scrubby bush things on it. Which way am I flying? Where's the compass on this one? Where's my compass? Oh, there we go. No. I don't know how to convert degrees into uh, compass direction. I'm not racing with you, Jeff. I'd rather bang my forehead with a plank of two by four. Right, let's get some attitude, then we'll look for an airport. And then we're going to get a Eurofighter and fly around some nice Australian beaches for a little bit. Yeah, apparently they're working on it, JK. I don't know when it will happen, though. There's, no, there's not even anywhere to land it. It's just trees and ground. Crazy, isn't it? Look how look how vast it is. <laughs> flat, flat land as far as the eye can see is absolutely bonkers. Now this is a uh, multiplayer as well. You can see we've got other people that are flying with us here, following us around. I'm going to land on the road. There's cars on the road. Ah, oh, There's got to be a patch of ground without edges on it. Look at the road goes all the way. There we go. There's a dirt road. Let's land on the dirt road. I'll do. That's a that's a good runway. Okay, there's still cars on it. Hello. Rolling over. Edge. <laughs> Not exactly smooth to landings, I'll be honest. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect landing. Oh, in the hedge. And no strike. Right. Let's get a Eurofighter and do a little bit of a coastal tour. Yeah, I'd, um, Apex, you have to like, you just have to be lucky and get them when they're on sale.
Where's Sydney? I wish Sydney was over here. Oh, there we go. Why? I don't want to press Alt Space C. What is wrong with you, Izzy? Eurofire. <laughs> Let's go for that. Perfect. Uh, there's hobbits in New Zealand and grass and sheep. Nice countryside. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> it's been banned. Well, it looks like we're loading the game again. That went well, didn't it? Hello, old mate, Howie. How's it going, man? Game just crashed. We have flown the fjords in Norway. Why is it taking so long to load? Oh, no. It is late. Microsoft flights him so weird. I don't know what the Flanders Ranges are. I'm all right, yeah. Tape loading error. This, a, a Commodore 64 game loads faster than this. Thanks, Izzy. Absolutely wrecked. C sixty four tape deck nightmares remembered. What's weird with Microsoft Flight Sim is that it doesn't do um It doesn't do like loading separate. Like it should operate how uh, Assetto Corsa works, or I don't know. It's just have a Windows-based launcher that does all the downloading and stuff. I like how the the old Microsoft flights have actually worked. Windows launcher, choose where you want to take off and fly, and then it loads into the graphics environment. That'd be so much better. So you could also look install mods and look at them and everything, have them all ready without having to load the whole game thing up. I hope it wasn't the skin that uh, caused it to break. Well, let's see. Yeah, I guess it's the that's the that's the one thing with games consoles, console ruining, PC game. Well, that didn't help, does it?
a second. I <laughs> messed up my uh, joystick here. I'm calibrating my force feedback. Oh my god, I just messed this up. Uh, I'm just, I don't even know how to how remove that. Huge error. Should be all right. I <laughs> know oh, he's still like messed this because it's so quick. Hang on, I'm doing. Where's my speed? 600 knots. So it should be all right. Why is it not? I think this aircraft is just a bit messed up.
Although actually... Oh, what is going on? Allowed to. Whoa. I think the aerolons might be messed up on this aircraft. Okay. I've lost the lap. There we go. Right, we're flying to Sydney. I mean, that looks pretty cool. My joystick's still way too strong. I will, I will play some DCS. Ah! <laughs> We're like five Newton meters of force. I'm trying to work out this bloody... My force feedback is like stuck on really high settings. Makes it very hard to fly.
<laughs> you need all this subtle nuances. This is actually how you fly a Eurofighter. It's just getting the scaling right so that it uses the range because it has five newton meters of force. If you go over it, it just starts clipping. I can't feel my wings. For this joystick, I don't know what power pack it has. I don't know why the. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem to be working the right way around. Some real Eurofighter pilots in chat. Well, that's nice to know. going on here. Fuck is not applying the uh, force feedback properly. DD girl's being very naughty. This is the thing with uh, expensive equipment. It always works with no uh, issues at all. And that, it might just be that this aircraft doesn't use the force wheel up properly. It was max, too maxed out. It's ignoring the uh, values I'm putting in. So th basically, this, that line should be uh, uh, like stopping up here. Otherwise, it's trying to. It's clip. Basically, it's clipping when it gets to this point. So when I push down, that's clipping there. You can see that my dot doesn't go above there. The problem with that is when it clips you lose detail and you're not, you're not getting anything. It's, it's ignoring this though, which is weird. I think I know what's going on here. Huge error. I think it opened these windows. It opened the windows too many times. Each window acts as like an individual form so, and you can keep opening them. It's just how they programmed it. So that's why it wasn't applying it. Yeah. 
Oh no, no. No. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. Do I have the wrong socks on? Probably. Oh. What on earth? Oh, I think it was bugged out and it was loading the wrong profile on this screen. Oh, it was kept going back to the other profile. <laughs> Good old programming. Hey, look at this. Now it's... What on earth? Now it's lined up to that. <laughs> This is what I spend my free time doing. Now you know why I get triggered when people talk about force feedback with driving sims. They don't realise that I've spent like 500 hours <laughs> trying every setting known to man. Hello. Right, let's... This should work. 1,600 on that. <laughs> Little barrel. Or we might, we might be getting there now. It might actually be updating the correct thing. Oh. Might actually be getting there. Although that should be updating with the simulator, but it's not. He's a co-pilot. What is going on here? Australia's below us. Hang on, it's because he's gone back to active profile GM1. Should be on Microsoft Flight Sim 20. What is going on? Oh, there you go. That's updating now with the sim. So, as I go faster... 
it should the resistance should increase are oh, we getting there that's way too little I'm trying to set up my force feedback with a really fast jet. Ah, oh, that's better. I don't know why the, the curve is still wrong, but... 1,000 should be enough. make sense because this jet goes up to like Mach 1.2 that'll do this is Eurofighter Typhoon yeah <laughs> it's all about the force feedback now if I open it I should there you go so when you get to about four, even though this is sold as a five newton meter joystick, it, it clips at about 4.1 newton meters. So look at that, there we go, like going at near max speed. That's, it's, it's getting up to that top level, that's fine. Nice! Right, we're good now. Golden gate time. Can add some uh, turbulence in, that'd be nice. Yeah, just take a little bit of time to update. Right, let's get flying up the coast here. Sorted. <laughs> Someone's probably already made jet profiles for this, but... It just reflects the body so much there. We're supposed to be flying towards Sydney. Not sure if we are. Have we missed it? Have we gone past Sydney? <laughs> Where's Sydney? I can't even tell this map. Australia just looks ridiculous. I oh, know there's a mushroom cloud over there. <laughs> Someone's dropped a bomb on Sydney. Well, yeah, I know it's on the East Coast, but I don't know, like... We were flying around in circles.
Ah, uh, you gotta turn the map upside down, that makes sense. I always forget about that. It's quite um, green on this, this part of Australia. I guess maybe they water it a lot. If it was, if it was naturally this green. Looks like, almost looks like um, South Africa. I've never been to Australia, no. I'm still not happy with this settings. <laughs> Welcome to Force Feedback, man. Never happy with his settings. Should have bought the uh, stronger runner joystick. I feel like th this one doesn't have enough force. This this joystick's great for it's great for small aircraft. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Actually, it's all right. It's like you know when you get to like a jet aeroplane. The problem is the speed range is such that if you want to have like a little bit of feel. At high speed, you have to then configure it so that you have no feel at low speed. But to be honest, in a jet plane, once well, in any plane, if you've passed <laughs> like f five, six hundred miles per hour, it, there's no variation over the control surface. It's just going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> like you need like a G4 simulation at that point. Like what's the next plane eleven? Because the wind is just literally, it's like having concrete slabs on the uh, aerolons. Ah, we're alright, we got it, we got something a bit better here. Yeah, we're at Mac 1. <coughs> Mac 1.1, Mac is 600 knots isn't it, 650 knots I think. 666 kilometers per hour at, at sea level. Uh, Max, but I don't know. I, I don't think that's the case. I've, I've used uh, SimuCube 2 and... Uh, I, I've used all the DD wheels. To be honest, the, the, the problem with DD wheels is that the differences are from the game... So, from the software. If that makes sense. Like the... For sure, the SimuCube 2 is the, is the best feeling DD wheel I've used, but I would rather use, I'd rather use a, uh, like a, what's the worst DD, the, the uh, AccuForce wheel, with AC force feedback, than a SimuCube 2 with ACC force feedback. Uh, Fanatec's not grainy, unless unless uh, it wasn't set up correctly. You you have to put uh, the FEI on like seventy. Then, no, Fanatec's not grainy at all. The uh, the AccuForce wheel's grainy, but you can remove the grainy type feel by adding certain types of filter into it. 
the, the thing with the Simucube 2 that's better than the the other DDs, and the same with the OSW with the small mage, is the the uh, if you have like a a quick hit jolt, like a, a very fine but heavy suspension movement, it picks that up and moves the wheel quicker. That's the main thing. But I mean, those sort of this is the thing. Like the better DD wheels. They tend to just do stuff like vibrations and thing better, but that, that's not really forces that help you drive. It's nice for immersion, but it's not, you know... It's not the most important part of force feedback. Look at this beach is really nice. Well, that's why I say the... Um, the games are like the biggest thing for force feedback. See, Australians are spoilt with like really nice sandy beaches, but then if you swim in the sea, you get eaten. So, <laughs> what do you go for? Look at this coast. I think the um, you go Mac two nice. I think the, the the big shame is that only the AccuForce has telemetry driven force feedback, so you can do like what I'm doing with this. on that little island. I'll have a house down here. Whoa, he's gone. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, James Brown. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? You're the lucky country. Oh, can I have a house on this? Doesn't look like there's anyone on it. It's got trees, so I'd imagine it can't be that bad. Maybe it's like a nature reserve or something. Oh, check that out. And there's probably like loads of flies or something down there. <laughs> that would be, look at you could live on that. You'd be sorted. Oh, hang on, there's, is that a house down there? No. If you live there, you've got forest, you got beach, you got plenty of land. Probably have shit internet. You need Starlink. I saw you go past Apex, yeah, up in, up into the uh, sky. Oh, hang on, is Sydney over there? We might actually be. Oh, he is. Look at him lag past. <laughs> the netcode does not like this aircraft. Yeah, it's my big problem. Is like internet for, for my job for this YouTube uh, live streaming and stuff. I need about I need like fifty up, fifty down. I think this might be Sydney here, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not actually that familiar with Sydney from the air. It doesn't look big enough to be Sydney. Yeah, I mean, this is basically... It's, the terrain looks photo real, doesn't it, Cattabay, from this height, I think. What do you... Do any Australians know what this is? I mean, does that look... That's not the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge, is it? It's not, it's not dense enough. I literally do not know Australia from the air at all. Like, if I was flying over Europe now, I'd be able to point... I'd, I'd like, know the rough direction of where stuff is. I have no idea where I am here. Australia. That's, that's where I am. I mean, this looks more uh, populated. It looks nice. That's all that matters, really, isn't it? <laughs>
Can't tell on the map here. Can't even zoom out further. Don't have place names on it. <laughs> I don't know where we are. Flying up the coast. There's not even airports on this. I have no idea. Let's just let's just buzz the uh, beach a bit. Let's go down. He's almost at Brisbane. Well, I'm glad you know where we are, because I, I have no... Oh, there's an airport there. Well, let's land there, and then we can... Uh... All right, all right, Tom. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the riveting downhill takeoff and force feedback settings. That's what it's all about. <laughs> we'll uh, catch you soon, Tom. Have a good night's sleep. Happy dog walking time. Well, I've probably gone too far. I don't have a habit of doing that. Right, we're going to land at that runway. Get some speed off here. How do you get the ceiling break open? Oh, here, look. The loft. We've opened the loft hatch. Landing gear down. All right, helicopter landing. Thanks for joining us, man. This runway is over here. Military landing. Sorry if I land on your house. Plonker down. I landed it a bit heavy handed, but ground physics were a bit weird with this one. <laughs> These uh, the wheels on this plane have infinite roll. Isn't it like rolling resistance? A little bug plane. No, this is not Sydney Airport. We got lost. We're gonna check the map and fly to Sydney Airport. You can tell it's not Sydney Airport because the frame rate is still going okay. Is 
anyone want a barbecue? <laughs> the suspension is now compacted up my bum. Right, let's let's actually get to Sydney here. I'm in Queensland. Oh, no, well, we're, I was sorting my force feedback of my aircraft out. <laughs> we're up here. <laughs> we flew. We mean we flew off of Australia. Right, let's try that again. Military base to Sydney. Oh, should we do the flight at night? That'd be cool. do like live conditions you can I've got a video on my YouTube channel Carl uh, flying around the Nordschleife couldn't even find Sydney of the day look here full house how you doing full house by the way what time is it where you are Well, that's a high resolution airfield if, you, if there ever was one. Right. Real time. Laps up. Seven thirty PM. All right. Fair enough. What is going on? I think there's something a bit weird with Microsoft Flight Sim when it comes to uh, yeah. taking off and how the planes go left and right. Because we've got, this is a jet plane. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, thanks for subscribing, guys. Ryan Russo, a dollar gamer. And the landing gear down at 700 knots, they would have blown off. This is apparently what it's like in Australia right now. Off we go to Sydney. It's not on the Xbox yet, no. Next, uh, summer, summer next year, I think. Mac one point. Look at this. Going to one, two, four, decimal, five, five, Full afterburners. We're now at Mac 1 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. Where's neighbours based? I don't know. I took off for some military base. Wow, oh, we're we're rocketing here. Two. Clear through the Charlie airspace. Clear through the Charlie airspace. Camera muscle seven. Sydney Tower GAM ERM USC LA seven is 
flying. What is that? Oh, hang on, this is photo terrain. I don't know, well, that was detailed, whatever that was. I'm going quick here. Hang on, have I gone past Sydney? <laughs> Already? Oh, man. Was it over there? I think that was Sydney. Arbor. The game lost my flight path. This aeroplane breaks the game. That's not Sydney Arbor, is it? <laughs> Africa now. We're in Zimbabwe. No, I don't think it, I don't think we had got to it yet. Okay, let's keep going. This is like when we were trying to fly the Blackbird to America and we ended up flying past like half of this country. Whoa, lo, lo. Keep going. fast but he's not that fast this is a uh, satellite data though Flying up the coast. We're over speeding. Again, booty bot. Whoop, hill. I haven't. I'll have to have a look. Here we go. I think it's along here. There it is. Sydney's just after that. Oh no, hang on. Isn't it down there? That's Sydney, isn't it? It's 
have a look at this in the Opera House then let's do it oh shit I'm st stalling oh fine we were fine <laughs> Mac 1.7 loop the loop I think that might have broken our necks off Yeah, we'll land in a bit. Might like take a little aeroplane out here. We've just got a bit of speed to scrub off here. Let's use the uh, brake. Yeah, should be da should be down here the uh, opera house in it. That looks nice, doesn't it? Look at that. Where's the opera house? This was hidden it. Are you sure this is Sydney? <laughs> it's behind you. This has the opera house in it, right? Should do. This doesn't look like Sydney. I'm well confused now. <laughs> oh, this this isn't Sydney. Sydney's after. We prematurely <laughs> we prematured it. Because that's not Sydney, is it? This is some other place. Ah, oh, no. Because there's no skyscrapers here. Oh, no, there are some over there. I'm well confused. What a bamboozle, guys. There's an airfield down here. <laughs> there ain't even a bridge. I think uh, I have I have an Orbex one. This is Botany Bay. Oh, I'll, put my I'll take my brake off. That's Sydney Airport. Well, hang on. There's the Sydney Opera House there. There we go. Well, it is because that's Sydney Opera House. Where's the bridge? Shouldn't there be a bridge there? There you are. Well, where's the bridge? Well, there's supposed to be a bridge there. So, uh, apparently, it's not there in this. Apparently, it's not being drawn. I think Orbex has messed it up.
There's the Sydney, famous Sydney underground water road. <laughs> it fell over. Right, let's land at Sydney Airport. Oh, I, I do have Orbex stuff for Sydney, but I turned it off. The face is the Sydney, it's the Sydney not, not Opera House. Yeah, I think I need to, I, I do have a Norbex add-on for it, but I turned it off when they did the update. Why is that plane coming in so slow? What is it? What is he in? UFO guys. It's a really short runway that. Oh, it's a passenger jet, which is it's so far away it looks like it's going very slow. Big cream. I don't know. I need to. I'll, I'll have to install the Orbex stuff. I don't normally fly around Australia. Let's land behind this passenger jet. Uh, overtaking. <laughs> Yoink. Always fly with traction control on. Ah, he stopped turning. A little bit of off road there. Turning <laughs> set go of a Volvo. Beat you. <laughs> oh, barely getting around there. And I'm overtaking all the uh, passenger jets. Look at this, is a right like? Excursion to get to the uh, terminal. this dear wants to turn to the right for some reason weird
Oh, did I? Cleared for a high speed taxi. Whoa! Two high speed. Oh, no, oh dear. High speed taxi. Oh, the taxi lines. I'm going to park right next to the. Uh... Hey, now he's turning to the. This is the issue we were having with the. Uh... I think there's something wrong with the time model in this game. <laughs> it wants to either turn to the right or left depending on speed. Would it make any sense with the jet plane? You're just going a straight line. Ah oh, no, we can't get. <laughs> it's too. Is too high. Oh, there's no reverse on this. Oh, just ignore that. Maybe we can take off from here. Maybe there's enough tarmac. I think we've got enough tarmac to take off from here. <laughs> from the parking lot. I think I think we can. I reckon we've got enough tarmac there. We can make that. Let's try it. plane ever for like if you wanted to travel somewhere <laughs> on approach I don't think so mate stalling Pretty smooth stool. Stop. 
going to gain a bit of speed up. What, later? It's one in the morning. <laughs> I'm going to see what Sydney's like from outer space. Thirty Tuesday morning. <laughs> well, I've had a productive day today. You know, we've done uh, some ranked race room racing. Done a little bit of invoicing. And we've done a bit of flight simming. What more could you want to get from life? That's that's a uh, number one. Go to Lidl's tomorrow. We turn the clouds off so we can see Sydney. Sydney from space. to stalling. Wow, well, actually doing about 48,000. I think the maximum altitude of this is 75,000. Australia's pretty damn big, isn't it? <laughs> if you were this high over the UK, you'd be able to see the whole of the UK. Australia's massive. I mean, what you can see on the screen here is... So, if you'd be able to see, like, from here, you'd be able... At this altitude, you'd be able to see, like, almost half of the UK. <laughs> Yeah, see, Sydney's quite spread out, isn't it? Because I guess they, they don't need to, like, stick it all in one tiny little spot. Can't apex, no. <laughs> I could only see some pixels. We're at 51. We've got another 10,000 foot to get, at least. I did see you fly past whilst we were on the ground, yeah. Plenty of space. Yeah, 
Yeah, basically you get to like 65, 70, and it stops. It just stops. Sixty. Yeah, it seems like 65,000 foot is the uh, max altitude. <laughs> I read that Matt is that they were all intentional. <laughs> they were like, ah, suicide by COVID. <laughs> Struth, I don't want to be eaten by a croc. I'm going to get myself some COVID and die like a European. <laughs> Let's have a look at the, this at night time here. Look at that, we're in space practically. see much at night. <laughs> Game of Muscle discovers night time. Right, let's land it at night. Hello, Phantom Racer. Let's see if we, how quickly we can get towards the ground here. Mac 1.6. Look at the uh, queue of uh, passenger jets. Let's uh, let's go right past them. This would be real world traffic that they put in uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. Look at that, there's three of them. They're staggered for the left and right airfield. It's crazy. <laughs> Imagine if you're coming into land and a fighter jet just comes. <laughs> got another one here. Where's the passenger jet? <laughs> That's the sound effect of a jet taking down a jet. Oh no, they beat me to it. I'm going to go on the left runway. Oh, there he is. You s slow, useless passenger jet. Oh, his lights on there. Land behind this guy.
<laughs> it's telling me to go around. No. Oh, passenger jet. Woo! <laughs> Fifth room. What on earth is that? UFO. Bloody lighthouse. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It looks like something out of a science fiction film. It's telling me to clear the runway. Clear the wrong way. Stop complaining at me. Hello. Oh, we're off road. Bit of course here. Hello, uh, Billy. How's it going, man? With joy flying here. Oh, jet in the face. Why is it green and then white? How does that work? What's the, what's the point in that? Uh, they do have some uh, missions. We'll do that. I'm going to park over here. And we'll, we can do a landing mission. Let's, do, let's go for it. my friend Simon <laughs> oh it's a lady Simonita <laughs> that was nice that was a good little flight there we found Sydney we're now Australian let's do one landing challenge here so you got um, activities you've got like the best thing in this at the moment for gameplay are the bush trips which are basically like uh, you just have to uh, follow a you've got like a, a bunch of directions to follow but you use the um... use the map it's basically just like going for a walk <laughs> it's like Duke of Edinburgh but in an aeroplane that's too, too English it's like going for a walk in the countryside but using a map but you're flying A strong wind landing challenge. But it, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't have any missions like the original Microsoft Flight Sim where, it, where you'd have like a passenger jet you have to take off and it tells you what to do and everything, you know. Hopefully, they will add stuff like that to it. Oh, man, look how much stuff is in this cockpit. So much going on. Oh, 
Oh, we're landing there. Yeah, they're going to have to have more gameplay when the console release comes out. The PC players are basically beta testers as usual. Uh, it's all right. I, I enjoy it. I, 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 for what it is, like, I, I'm not... I, I think I would be annoyed. <laughs> What's that? Little straight bit of sand. I, if I was a... Um, hardcore flight simmer like you know mental mental flight simmer like like if i was as serious about flight simming as i am doing driving simulators i'd be annoyed but i'm a really casual flight simmer <laughs> i turned into soon oh well no problem i know maybe not with a gust as we came over the land there. Wonder what we get. Points. <laughs> that was alright. Land pretty good landing precision. It's a side wind landing, that's why we were coming in wonky donk. Eight 808,860. 8, okay, we've got to try that again, haven't we? <laughs> this is this is you get a scoreboard. This is how they get you. 75 knots. You should be on your final approach. Yeah, it was a, it was a heavy landing, but look here, shut up, Phantom Racer. It was all right. We got legs. The thing is, the way they do the landing challenges, you actually get more points for landing badly. Like the because you get points for hitting the target and for not rolling. Um, so if you actually plonk it down, rather than go for like what would be a very you know it should it should weight the points towards smoothness and accuracy as opposed to the the rolling point system is stupid. Like landing smoothly and accurately is the. M a million times more important in real landing in an aeroplane than how long it takes a plane to slow down once you've landed like if anything you want to land as long as putting as minimal wear on the brakes as minimal wear on the uh, aircraft as possible like, that's what it's all about is putting as little wear as possible on the aircraft so stopping distance assuming you've got a light runway Maybe you want to get off the runway quickly so that um, other aircraft can take off. But other than that, stopping distance is not the priority. So I think the the point system should be based like should accommodate that better as well. <laughs> it's crosswind. It's awesome, dude. Crosswind landings are great fun. So you basically you fly at an angle towards the runway, and then you use the rudders at the last minute to straighten up before you get to the ground. I mean, that was effing sweet. <laughs> that was a good landing. Come on. That was that was good. That was about as good as you can get, for me at least. 336. That was sweet. 
Look at how, like, last minute we got it right on the thing and then just gently did it and last minute straightened her up. Stayed in the middle of the runway. Oh, I thought I was good. I thought I was good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> got him 300. That's pretty decent. Oh, should we try and do a better lap? Should we give it one more go? Should we do a different Let's do a different one. I haven't got any friends. World top 10. Mongolia <laughs> Mangler. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Pilot Man's going to be second. Right, let's do another one. Oh, man, I hate scoreboards. I get proper addicted. Queenstown. Where's that one? New Zealand. Okay. Thank you for flying. Hello, Butcho. Hello, Camille. Yeah, it's been good fun. We, we uh, earlier in the stream, we were trying to take off a Spitfire from Church. Is it Church of all? Churchill? Churchill? We'll try to take it off without using any engine, using the hill. <laughs> we managed to do it with like a 50 knot headwind. Oh man, I'm crap with these sorts of planes. Where was the runway? What? I was not paying attention. Oh, okay. So you fly into the stay and then round a bit, fair enough. Of course. Of course we have DD Girl Stewart. Oh, so this is New Zealand. Actually, I think New Zealand's nicer than uh, Australia. Like, if I was going to live on that side of the earth, I think I'd probably go for New Zealand. I have a... Um... Oh, hello! DD girl with the DD wheel What a babe, what a beauty, what a sexy lady It's a DD girl with the DD wheel With a DD aeroplane and a DD joystick DD girl, DD girl Dreamy force, feedback lady DD girl, DD girl, beautiful direct drive bosoms. Everybody needs a DD girl, put a DD girl in your sim rig. Even DD girl can fly an aeroplane with a direct drive servo motor wheel because she's pro. DD girl with the DD wheel, what a babe, what a beauty, what a sexy lady. DD girl with the DD wheel, Aki Four Simutech, Famu Cube, Simu Cube, <laughs> DD girl, DD girl, she's so beautiful. DD girl, put your hand in the air, light your candles, set fire to your hair, and become bold for DD girl. She's gone, she's disappeared into the forest. Where did she go? Pay attention, I told you she's gone into the forest to do her 100% force me back foreign's delogging challenge. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Camille. Oh, we're too high. 500. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for becoming a channel member. Whoa. Oh, Jesus. Wind shear. Oh, bloody overshot it. 
Whoa! Okay. Not the best of landings. I'm not very good at landing jet planes. Right, we've got to try that again. 186,000. Now I know where we're going. Yeah, the glide slope wasn't exactly ideal. This plane actually goes on for quite a while. 35. I don't know. It's mostly a headwind. It's slightly off to the left. Yeah, jets, you... The thing with jet planes is you fly them based off engine power as opposed to... Yeah. It's just weird. I'm just not used to jet planes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dankeschön. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same as getting the golden disco ball in GT Sport. Yeah, I think it, with like a Cessna the, or like a very light aircraft, you land using the nose, like you pitch up and pitch down, and you. That's it. You change pitch. Whereas with, with a jet plane, you set the glide slope that you're aiming for, and then you adjust the power for the plane to be going up or down, if that makes sense, rather than pointing the nose up and down. Up for landing light aircraft. <laughs> it makes more sense to me. You have to fly a jet plane like you'd land a space shuttle. Yeah, this is New Zealand. Should be using. You see the little uh, thing on on the uh, column in front of me. That tells you if you're too high or too low. Oh man, see the, that's what's cool with this is you can see the turbulence from transitioning from the ocean to the valley to the. And when you fly over ground versus water, you, you suddenly get like turbulence because there's obviously different air temperatures. Please say that I'm too high. <laughs> there we go. Thing is, everything's delayed. So what you do now is sort of for ten seconds ahead. in at a bit of an angle, but by the time we get to the runway... to try and stall it onto the uh, <laughs> onto the landing target. Well, we gained some places. That one more go at that. J 
Jet, I don't. Jet planes are. They're all like delayed as well, like in terms of the. So when you when you've got a jet the engine power is really delayed so what you might notice this if you've ever been in a passenger jet landing because of the delay with the when you add power to a jet engine because it has to spool up before you actually get thrust from it and the whole design of it sometimes you like they give it a, a, like a load of force not 100 percent, but like a shitload of force and then pull it back straight away and that acts that's better than going oh, a little bit and coming back off it because it gives you more response it's like a turbo in a 1980s formula car, <laughs> basically. Get on it, get off it. <laughs> what a nightmare this is. We're getting this this time. We've learnt. I've learnt it. We've learnt the envelope. Have you tried to solo a 1-3 light plane? No? Oh, what, the, uh, the new uh, microlight? Extra points for barrel rolls. Right. Needs to be further over the land there. <laughs> royalist? Why would you be a royalist? They do F all. Just cost everyone money. Oh, the stream just died. Whoops. That's how good my landing was. Broke the live stream. <laughs> Doesn't it have the glide slope on the on an indicator in the uh, in the plane? This is a, oh no, it's a jet plane. So, some of turbo, this plane flies kind of a bit like a turbo prop plane as much as it does a jet. I'm gonna hit these houses. Whoa! Windy. Whoa! Oh my god. Where's the hilltop?
<laughs> Bloody ground effect. I need to be... I need to have a bit more before we get to the... Uh, you notice when we get to a certain altitude, it wants to keep going with the ground effect. <laughs> so you got to, with this, you have to factor in the you have to factor in the bloody turbulence, then the delay of the jet engines, and then when you get to about fifteen meters off the ground, it, it, the ground effect. Then you you just keep floating forever. So you have to make sure that you. are set up before the ground effect one last go at this one we're getting there i need to get a glider in this i mean that'd be really good fun Pretty amazing how uh, how strong ground effect is for how long it makes you glide. <laughs> this is like MS2 physics. Wow. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, I think the uh, danger of this this airport is the the lineup forces you to potentially fly into a hill if you got it slightly off so if you get the angle wrong you you're going to fly into a hillside yeah. well hello thanks for subscribing Key. Thank you, man. Look at the turbulence. Yeah, I'd imagine as well the weather in this area probably doesn't help. Look, look at this. See, look how much turbulence you get as soon as you fly into the valley. You're not even moving the joystick there. <laughs> That's all turbulence. Yeah. I want to land with the parking brake on. <laughs> it slows the aircraft down quicker. So even though I'm actually going to come in shorter than what the puppies are saying. Seven hundred and ninety third. That was a smooth landing. One hundred twenty six uh, feet per minute. It still, we still came into, we sixty one foot off. I don't know. How we're supposed to do the ground roll better because if you, I'm gonna do one more go. <laughs> the problem is if you take the power off more sooner, it stalls. But then you've got the ground effect. So maybe if I take. Once I get it down lower, I'm going to take the power off sooner and the ground effects should stop it from stalling. 
We can get a top 500. It was, it was a smooth touchdown, though. The bottom of this aircraft is quite a lot lower than I thought it was. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's uh, landing a plane is not particularly hard. I think it's just landing it smoothly is difficult. I mean, I've got a very good joystick that makes it a lot easier. Now, I don't quite get the frame rate out of this for, for me to really want to do VR with it. I, I'm very sensitive to motion sickness, so I tend not to use VR unless it's like 100% perfect. What does T mean on there? Is that is that the I don't know what the T means. On the uh Speed speedo on the uh, glass display. A letter, it's just a letter T. You can see it at the top. Ah, uh, 140. Is that the recommended speed for landing or something? <laughs> oh, it's the password. Oh, okay, that's good to know. The red, the red mark at the bottom is if it gets to that, you're going to stall. Now, it's some recommended speed. I think it might be the... Uh, I think it might be the speed that you're supposed to stay at, minimum. Whoa, look at that. Jesus. I'm going to let this go to the right a bit more at the start. This goes off to the left. Oh, come on. 576. Well, the precision was good, but the landing was heavier. I think the front wheel smacked the ground a bit heavy. Right, we're done with that. <laughs> the frame rate dropping as well doesn't help. That's my excuse. Five hundred and seventieth is okay. I'll accept that.
One of these landed here during lockdown. <laughs> it was probably just rich people were like, oh, please let me get in the plane. And they're like, okay. Right, let's, should we do one more? Portugal in a passenger jet. Let's give that a go. There's some crazy videos on this airfield uh, of people landing in crosswinds. Yeah, well, you know when they did all the lockdown started and um, if you looked at Skyscanner... Hello, Steve Tackle. If you looked at Skyscanner, there were, like, shitloads of private planes all of a sudden. So, like, where I live, you, there's normally, like, you could probably see about three or four passenger jets every, like, minute or two. And it just went silent. But you'd have all these tiny little Lear jets <laughs> and helicopters. There's loads of people flying in helicopters around the UK. Oh, here we go. Where's the airfield? Oh, okay, it's on the right. Yeah, for some reason, the passenger jets in this... Uh... This aircraft is uh, composite. Ah, oh, nice one. <laughs> you had to be in my voice. Oh dear. these types of plane they don't make any sense to me I have no idea what I'm doing here. I don't know what. I don't even know how close the bottom of the plane is, like, intuitively. Oh, she's going Dora the Explorer on us. Dropping. 30, <laughs> it's bouncing. What? Yeah, the physics on this plane are mental. Smooth landing. <laughs> what was that? That was weird. Yeah, I don't think the I think the physics are knackered on this. This does not fly like a plane. I don't know what on earth was going on there. Yeah, I don't, I don't like how that flies. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I've, I've flown jet planes in X-Plane 11. And they, 
make more sense of that. It does <laughs> flies like a cross channel ferry, but but then tons of glide. All right, let's land a small aircraft. Yeah, well, the the wheels are very low down, like because the planes are like four, like what, like five, six meters. Well, not that much. It's probably, it's probably like four meters tall. There is an aeroplane in AC. Uh, yeah, that, that that whole new stuff about AC2 is just all made up. <laughs> yeah, the menu is not exactly the most intuitive in this. They definitely could have... Um... Well, the, uh, the user interface for the old Microsoft Flight Sim was a lot better, I think. But they've had to design this user interface so you can navigate it with a gamepad. All right, AC2 will probably happen, but there's there's no information about it. A, a company businesses have to, pre, like, for investors and just for yourself, in a business you have to say, oh, we are going to be we're planning to do X in like four in two. We're doing X in six months time. Y in six months time. X in a year, X in four years, you know, that's just what you do. But it, it, often it's completely arbitrary. Like, it's just a plan. It does, it's not actually even finalised. Or, like, you're not even necessarily working on a specific thing yet. You just put that in your projections because that's what you do. Like, it's better to plan. <laughs> so the AC2 thing is like, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure Kunos are working on, or not even Kunos, but, well, 505 games, which aren't what they are now. Whatever the Kunos is that did ACC, they will be working on other titles, as you'd expect, but I, they're not... I think when people hear AC2, they think, oh, actual Assetto Corsa 2, not ACC with different content. I, I'm, I would wager... I would wager 200 plus pounds that the next Assetto Corsa will use, um, will use the ACC game engine, but it will just contain different content. Because the money is made selling games cross-platform. Not it's not made making PC games. Like ACC is a thousand times worse a game than Assetto Corsa. But it will when they uh, when you tabulate its income over the course of five ten years, it will probably have made more money than Assetto Corsa purely because it's going to be more of a successful cross-platform title. Yeah, no, uh, no one knows, Steve. No one knows. I mean, I'd, I would probably know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know anyone at Kunos, but... It just... It, it would be very weird to put so much effort into what they did to get because it's really impressive what they did with um, ACC as much as I dislike aspects of it it's still very impressive um, getting Unreal Engine to work as well as they have it just make no sense at all to abandon that see this flies so much better than a passenger jet
Rather heavy landing. <laughs> Good precision, too heavy. Let's try that one more time. Well, it's not that. It's that it's not just that a jet plane is um, less manoeuvrable. It's that in Microsoft Flight Sim, the jet planes like <laughs> they like want to fly up and over themselves. The physics just don't make any sense at all. If you fly a passenger jet. Even in the old Microsoft Flight Sim, or you fly in X Plane 11, it just makes way more sense. They don't like. Let's say I do a movement, like, like, like so. Let's say I give a load of power. Um, with a passenger jet in Microsoft Flight Sim, it's like imagine the plane's like this. Uh, it's flying forwards, but we're flying next to it. When I give power to it in Microsoft Flight Sim, it's like it does this. <laughs> Or like when you when you like lift up, it's like it goes like this. Whereas a real plane goes more like this. Microsoft Flight Sim goes like this. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. The small planes don't do it. They're flying as if they're independent of the wings, basically. This, the large planes. I mean, it's just physics. It's bloody obvious. It's like I, I'd, I'd never flown a Cessna. We, I got a chance to fly a real one, and it was uh, exactly flew exactly how I'd expect it would. <laughs> just by the fact that it's like, well, you know, it's kind of obvious how you how things fly. If you've, if you've flown remote control planes or you can you can you can play no you can tell if a simulator is realistic or not <laughs> triggered but you can you can you, I don't know maybe some people don't have an intuitive sense to what's realistic or not but you can tell you can tell when something is real like there's certain aspects of like you can't tell the finer details for sure there's very subtle stuff that we, you know, you wouldn't know unless you'd done it for real. But there's like something operating completely disconnect, disconnected to physics is is obvious. Maybe not to some people, but thank you, Carlos. Leslie, thank you for subscribing. Yeah. Well, we got to land softer. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ignore the real, the realistic glide slope and use the ground like come in and hold it with the ground effect and then power off just before the actual target. So I'm coming in way more shallow than you realistically would want to. Should get ground effect about now. See, I cheated it with the ground effect there. And then I pulled back just... There we go. Look at that. That's better. Still 113 foot feet per minute.
It's amazing how much you could keep going with a bit of ground effect. <laughs> Hell no. I have to keep going. Right, let's. I just want to try... Um... Let's go to area 51. I'm going to land the Spitfire now. I want to see how much uh, how much glide we can get out of the Spitfire. I think it's just GM. Where's Area 51? Groom Lake. Hang on. You do this on a 2D map, but on a 3D map. Hang on, it's up here. It here. I think it's there, isn't it? Where is it? It's a shame it's not high resolution. satellite view because that would really help oh hang on it's near here I think that's right isn't it There it, it is. Um, Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's the one I've just picked. Seems to ring a bell. You're not one of those people. You're just saying that so they don't come after you. You you just don't want to be on the list, do you? Yeah, it's it's not high enough resolution for when you zoom in to to really know where you're looking at. 
um, it doesn't have to be that high resolution, but you know what I mean. Like, X-ray Tango Alpha traffic G A M E R N U S C L E seven taking off runway tree tree right departing straight out. Some issues taking off this airplane. <laughs> some small issues. Right. Didn't see nothing, guys. <laughs> this is Grim Lake. This is this is the, this is Area 51. We actually did get it. Homey Homey Airfield is the name of it. There you go. It's the longest runway in the world. There you go. That's Groom Lake. We actually, we did actually have Area 51. <laughs> we actually did pick the right runway. Genius. Point is, I can use this runway as a. Uh, you can see how much the ground effect lasts for. As though. Look at that. Look how long that runway is. This is where they developed the um, SR-71 Blackbird. They, so the really long runway was for the landing test planes. You can land them. Uh, you got space to abort and uh, everything else. Look at that it's like a mental runway. And you see these uh, the big craters. Up here is all the uh, nuclear bomb test sites. So f a bit further to the left. Thank you, Christian Rogers, for subscribing. See, in the past, uh, tourists used to be able to get on these... See these hills here? So if you, I, when I was a kid, I was massively into like UFOs and things. <laughs> I like uh, just really into it. These on the other side of these, so, so people used to walk to the top of these, but you can't anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Yes, the craters are not nuclear tests. They are from uh, from UFOs crashing. So I think it's this ridge here. There should be a road on the other side. Oh, there you go. You can see the road up there. It's a shame. I, I mean, I know there's nothing there anymore. Like, I, it's not even... Um, I don't think they even use it as a... Um, I don't think they even use it as a test um, flight base anymore because the um, there's, like, a lot of um, radioactive materials and stuff from all the nuclear testing. They obviously didn't care about that in the 50s. So like, there you go. You can see where people would go and take the pictures. I think it's one of these hills here, one of these little hills. This is like the angle that you'd get all the UFO photos from. <laughs> but now there's, um, there should be a road coming off one of these hills on the left. But basically, they have uh, they have like their security guard guys, and they just sit out on the hill. And so, if you drive, if you're to drive there, hello, Crov, then. If you come down this road here, there's that black post box is actually just at the junction there, I think. 
But if you were to you go past a certain point on this road, there's a sign and they're just they're just arrest you straight away. The security gate somewhere around here. So yeah, now basically now, if you wanted to go here as a tourist, round about here is as close as you can get, and as you can see, you can't <laughs> you can't see now. You can imagine why in the past they'd see all the uh, UFOs like UFO test pl test flights. If you came down that main road and you parked up. And they're flying the SR seventy ones. I think this bit's where that uh, alien <laughs> restaurant is. I used to love this shit when I was like 13, 12, 13 years old. I was like, ah, oh, UFOs. I mean, I didn't think they were ever like real alien, alien aliens. But you know, it was possible, but not like realistically. Yeah, Paul's good. Yeah, this is where that hotel is and the little diner and things down there. I like the idea of aliens still, but, you know, obviously it doesn't make any sense. Right, we're going to try and test the ground effect out here after that little tour. Yeah, I that'd just confuse them, wouldn't it, I think? No one expects a Spitfire. Yeah, it's good fun. It's like science fiction, though, isn't it? You know, it's like X-Files or Stargate or something. Well, that's a good point. We need to fly to Cheyenne Mountain. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just good silliness. Hello, Evan Smith. Now we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're going to test out ground effect at Groom Lake. What are the air... It's big and hill in the UK. They uh, land um, secret drones and test stuff there. <laughs> and then try and cover it up with blankets. Don't have a look. <laughs> so stupid. It's funny how mundane things are in reality. <laughs> I think what it is is that most people's lives are like very very boring or they're very boring people as well and, and the thing is reality is very mundane in most ways I mean there's not that like you take something like Edward Snowden right which is like from an American government's perspective is mental like a guy literally has massive amounts of national secrets and you know very pertinent stuff to the current contemporary security and stuff that's also a political nightmare <laughs> and also a financial nightmare going into a technically an enemy you know carrying that into an enemy country right even with that You kind of look at it and you're like, well, what did they actually manage to do? Like, the best they could have done was stopped his plane and arrested him. It, it's like... Even that's very mundane, though. Even, even with that, it's a case of, oh, he's got some files. Ah, oh, well, we can try and put him in jail. <laughs> it's not exciting. It's not like, right, we've got to put the chip in him. Stuff's normally a lot... That kind of stuff's normally very mundane and boring. It's just how it is. Fortunately, stuff that's not mundane and boring, like weather, geography, things that anyone can do. <laughs> just like just like looking at the world is amazing. But stuff like aliens and it, all that military stuff, most of it is going to be very mundane and boring. It's all like procedure and just, no, oh, put this here, put that there, collect these files. There'll be some interesting technologies and stuff, but only like really interesting for the people that actually understand it. In, in, I mean, it's only as exciting as, like, um, if you were, like, a programmer coming up with really novel solutions to some, like, mental, like, algorithm or, like, um, I don't know, you're a, a chip designer. I mean, the, the point is, there's plenty of things out there that aren't secret at all that are just every bit as exciting. I'm sorry, Evan. 
Right, we're testing ground effect here. I've turned the power off. I want to see how long this glides for. Put the flaps down as well. How long will it keep going on zero power? I should probably put the wheels down. What on earth is that? There's a building in the way. <laughs> Why is there a building at the end of the runway? It's houses. All right, here we go. Oh, that's just just stalling onto the runway. Now it like lifts and then it goes out the ground effect and then it goes I'm holding the joystick steady. It's like bouncing bouncing onto the ground effect and off it. Do the landing gear up. <laughs> with the flaps up uh, I think IL 2's got better physics than uh, Microsoft Flight Sim oh, yeah I've seen that yeah <laughs> where he's at the end of the runway and this reporter's just like oh And the plane just goes. Wham. I can't wait to go glider flying in real life. They a glider can uh, do the whole of this runway from ground effect, just coming out of the sky with his. If it doesn't have its brakes deployed, you could you can get about a mile out of a glider, maybe even more. I'm off the power totally here. <laughs> it's just bouncing off the ground effect. Woo! Oh, bit of a bounce there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in from the uh, more to the right. I don't wonder if we can glide the whole runway. We might be able to. I'm 
about those bloody houses on the end of the runway? That's annoying. I'm not barely moving the joystick there. All right, thanks, Twang TV. Hello. Not a plane at the end of the runway. Woo. 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 Still going. Mm. I've been off the throttle for ages. Bloody out and I'm bouncing all over the place. We're going in and out of ground effect. Look at that. <laughs> How cool did that sound? Oh, there you go. It ran out of speed there. Right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna do that with the power off coming from over here. I was going to turn the engine off totally and cut the fuel. Thanks for subscribing, uh, Cruel Pandas. Where's the fuel? You cut the engine totally with this. There we go. Turn the mixture off. This is with no fuel at all. Everything cut off. It's <laughs> that stall in there. Do you think the plane's rolling this a bit too much? If you don't put the brakes on, they roll like forever. Which is weird. 
Look at the wheels wobbling. Uh, it's a little bit awkward for takeoffs. Um, let's do. I'm going to do one landing here. We're gonna. We'll go for a. We'll land at Biggin Hill. Final landing in the Spitfire. Let's put the weather to storm. <laughs> Biggin Hill's down here, I think, somewhere. I oh, know here's another military. This is where they, they also have uh, stuff from here. Right. Let's try and do a storm landing. Favorite, I think the Spitfire is probably the best mod um, overall. Uh, the um, Aramachi jet plane is good fun. That's nicely done. Yeah, this should be interesting. I'm not sure if we'll be able to land this smoothly, but we'll give it a, we'll give it a shot. Okay, I have no idea where the runway is. <laughs> Where's the ground? Where's the runway? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Right. Oh shit! That ground's well close. Right, where's the runway? A little bit of a storm going on there. There's the runway. Right. The scenery that matches the plane. What is that? Oh, it's like military. Military stuff. Oh, there it is. I've lost the runway there. Wow, it's quite windy. Barely moving over the ground. Windy out there, guys. At least there's no rain over the airfield.
Whoa! <laughs> Smooth. Oh, Jesus Christ. This, there's something with this landing. It's not right. <laughs> there's something up with this plane. Oh, my God. There's something up with it when landing it. It goes mental. That not make any sense why it did. Like, it goes one way and then it all of a sudden it goes the other way. Does it when taking off as well? <laughs> Textbook. Nah, it's just this Spitfire does it. The other planes don't do it. And it doesn't do it in X Plane 11 either. Yeah, I'm at Biggin Hill. We, we were messing around earlier, Camille doing weird stuff with it, and it was doing it with the engine off as well. <laughs> it's just some weird... There's some weird shindigs going on with this aeroplane. This is all fine and normal. It's once you make contact with the ground with your wheels. I'm, I'm off the power. Oh, I'm missing the bloody runway here. Then it starts rolling. Now I'm having to push the rear to the right load. And now it's rolling the other way crazy. Like... It doesn't make any sense. And now... <laughs> I mean... It's not torque because the engine's turned off, basically. It's, it's, it just doesn't... It's weird. See, it doesn't do it in other flight simulators, so it's, it's some... I don't think it used to do it as well. I think since the update... Yeah, the control's calibrated. I think because this aircraft's very sensitive, it magnifies it. Take off really gradually here. It's quite a lot of wind though, so. It's totally stable. Now it's pulling to the right. You guys, that's the. That's it pulling into the wind, baby. It might just be the wind affecting it. I'm sure the wind is uh, behind us, though. Yeah, the Eurofighter was... Yeah, exactly. I mean, a Eurofighter shouldn't do that. <laughs> it's a jet... Exactly. A, a, a jet engine plane with two jets on... With no different throttle input. It, they're jet engine... Jet planes are like bloody bricks. I 
And the fact that it only does it right at the... Something to do with the wheels, I think. Why is it still pulling to the right? I'm, I'm on the rear, and then it... Uh, uh. At the end, I've got the power off, and you can just hear it. It's rotating with it being blown. Where's the wind? So the wind is coming from the left. The wind's blowing from the left, so... You would expect the plane to then... It's kind of being pushed, but then also it wants to... The planes want to fly into the, like, straight. Let's turn the wind off. No wind, clear days. Right, let's just pull off here. Up. Wanting to go to the left. What now it's oscillating? So if the engine the engine's rotating to the right, you expect the plane to like pull as you as it talks up. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Good day, hello. Oh, it's pulling to the left straight away. Now it's pulling to the right. Why? If you land in a... Oh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this plane's, like, very unstable. Like, I, I have landed in a light passenger aircraft in real life, and it landed very straight like it didn't require it, it, the, it wasn't a particularly windy day it was it was like landing a car <laughs> it was that it was that easy for it to be in a straight line literally like landing a car like if you if you a car had wings and you were to land on a it literally felt like landing a mini or something did not suddenly move off to one side. There we go. Look, that land there. It's 
See, that's all right. If you land it heavily, let's get on the power and get going. I think it's... Oh, I don't know. When you land it, when, you, when you're in that little bit of... Um, when you're trying to land it really, really light and you're in that kind of ground effect and then one wheel touches the ground. So, yeah, I think it's because the... The, the ground, the, the friction on the, the tyre model. <laughs> it's the tyre model, guys. Tyre model failure. Well, that's going to be a bit heavy. And that says, whoa, there you go. Textbook. That is how it's, that's how you land a plane quickly. Oversteer. <laughs> nice grass, though. It's, uh, yeah, it's very strange. It's like it's, it's like it's a bit too floaty as well. When you when you fly the Spitfire in uh, X Plane Eleven, it's a lot stiffer flying. Things are a bit floaty in Microsoft flights. Him. Good for helicopters. I guess maybe you want your plane to be floaty. It's like a hot, hot air balloon. <laughs> right. Anyway, that is the Spitfire. As you can see, we've landed it like a pro there. Great fun, though. Absolutely uh, gorgeous. And, uh, yeah. Nicely, nicely done. I don't know, Apex. I mean, maybe it is right. I don't know. It just seems a bit weird, but it don't, it don't really matter because most of the time, you once you're flying at speed, it doesn't really matter, and you're sightseeing mostly. I think the uh, the Cessnas and stuff seem to be a lot better in this. Should be Cessna Simulator. Righty, I'm I'm off, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for donating. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking the like button. Thanks for staying awake. I will see you in the next live stream soon. Till then. Goodbye, guys. Take care.